Oh, hello and good afternoon, in my case at least. Uh, I welcome you today to trading to the Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Admiral Markets. Today's topic, you can already see it on the screen. It's an introduction to ETFs. Um, a topic which might probably um, at first uh, not seem that interesting, but I hope that I uh, can bring it to, um, to light. Um, we have an introduction, yes, and I will shine lights on some basic um, 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 things here. You have to know when, when it comes to ETFs, but there's also something which is especially, yeah, probably very important right now. Um, so ETFs give, a, um, uh, give you a very, very good um, way to diversify your portfolio, um, simple way to invest, very cost efficient way to invest your, uh, your, your money. Um, but it's also trading, um, uh, trading related relevant, uh, especially when it comes to topics like we already discussed here during uh, former um, um, trading spotlight webinars like high frequency trading, for example. And then there's some ideas, theories uh, that ETFs and also high frequency algorithms here by um, uh, arbitrage, by, by doing arbitrage here. Um, um, could result that this behavior could result in instabilities for the financial um, um, system in general. So yeah, there's plenty of of of, um, of interesting stuff we went we can cover, and hopefully we will also cover here and within the next um, 45 minutes around. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the trading chat box, and um, I will start here first of all with the um, first um, um, idea of today's agenda. Questions we want to answer today are. What are ETFs and how to trade ETFs? In fact, it's very easy. ETF is, by the way, short for exchange traded fund. So uh, if you trade an ETF, you trade it via um, a direct stock exchange, direct access to a stock exchange. And then we also want to highlight the advantages of um, um, ETF trading, but also disadvantages. So it's not just um, uh, um, 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 positive things, but there's also some aspects some of you might probably consider to be negative disadvantages when trading ETFs and uh, which needs some adaptations then, um, which needs to be made once you decide to trade ETFs, um, respectively invest in the markets via an ETF. Before we get started, first of all, um, in regards to my uh, person, my name is Jens, Jens Klatt. I'm uh, located in Berlin, Germany. And this is, by the way, uh, probably the only thing I'd like to give as usual. Uh, for further infos, please uh, refer to the, um, in, in case of, of the, of the um, uh, um, recording you're currently watching on YouTube, uh, then refer to the chat box, please, respectively the description box of the video. Uh, there's a link to an interview I gave um, uh, or I did together with Admiral Markets uh, last year. They get a very good idea of where I come from, uh, what's my what's my educational background, and um, how did I enter the world of financial markets, um, what is my trading like, and all this. Um, what's probably most interesting, and I already mentioned it, is that I'm located in Berlin in Germany, and here uh, Admiral Markets comes already into play with having an office um, also in Berlin, Germany, the capital of Germany. Um, in general, Admiral is um, a global player when it comes uh, to the world of financial services, um, especially when it comes to um, FX and CFDs with offices around the globe, 20 and more offices. This is especially noteworthy due to the fact that uh, you, especially when it comes to trading, especially when it comes to financial services and customer support, have a very, very good chance of um, finding someone speaking your native language, which is probably a big plus, um, in, especially when it comes to building trust to your broker. Um, when it comes to money in general, it's a very sensitive topic and um, usually you want to talk to someone who's speaking your respective language. So usually it shouldn't be such a big issue, English um, around the globe. This is an English speaking webinar. So most of the time uh, that's probably uh, not affecting um, um, many, but still I, based on my uh, personal experiences within this industry can say that I know that's a, um, a very important thing. Um, especially let's, let's refer to German clients, for example, they, they love to have someone speaking German and um, answering their questions in German because there's no chance of misunderstanding them because you can clearly, you, you just know what you want to know, what you want to ask. And um, it's just a big plus. 
Plus, on top of that, um, Admiral is also here in Germany referred, um, and not only in Germany, I think, but I can I can speak from this perspective, especially um, as the DAX expert, respectively, as a broker who has a highly competitive offering when it comes to FX and CFD trading in regards to very, very low commissions, very tight spreads, uh, very favorable trading conditions, especially currently. Look at the markets, look at the quick moves up and down. Um, what what um, um, especially active trading comes down to is uh, good, solid order execution every time, all the time when you're trading the markets. And um, I personally can can just confirm that this is the case. Um, I have my account with Admiral. Um, and I can I can say so far I haven't had any issues in regards to stability in regards to auto execution in regards to slippage in 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 anything uh, in regards to anything it's it's really um, it's definitely worth to give Admiral a deeper look here um, for further information refer to the website AdmiralMarkets.com and now let's join the action let's have a look here at the question we want to answer today what are ETFs in this case, and I already said it um, uh, at the in, 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 in the introduction here that ETF is short for exchange traded fund, so ETF. And uh, here we refer to a group of securities you can buy or sell via um, uh, you can sell um, and buy or sell on a stock exchange, so exchange traded fund. Um, I think this is self-explanatory in this case. So you buy and you sell via a stock exchange. So we are not talking about an OTC, um, um, a product here, over-the-counter derivative or something like that. No, we look at it. <clears throat> we look at a at a um, at a yeah at the group of stocks which are within this um, 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 fund. Then you trade via an exchange directly via an F, um, um, via an exchange. And in fact, I was referring to stocks. This is not necessarily true. Most of the time, it is true. But um, when looking at EFTFs, um, we in, in general, we look at a range of asset classes which are covered here. So like um, um, consisting of a group of traditional listed companies, but also currencies or commodities, for example. So gold um, here, we will have a look at the um, 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 several um, ETFs, in fact, just to give you an idea of how they um, are, are built or um, how the um, a portfolio is constructed there. Um, so exa for example, when looking at gold um, here, we are usually looking at um, uh, it's especially mining stocks, for example. Some of you probably have heard about Barrick Gold. Um, in case of the GDX, um, um, it has, a, I think, it has a weight of over 10% within it. But over 10% means there's also, uh, it consists of 90% other gold mining stocks then in this regard. And that's, that way gives uh, um, a quite diversified um, 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 way to invest into this gold um, commodity in this case, or precious metal, however you put it. So some might probably say gold is not necessarily a commodity, but it's like like a currency. It's a precious metal. Um, it depends. I, so I mean, I'm, I can, I can um, um, or in my case, I'm, I'm completely fine with saying gold is a commodity, whatever. So yeah, um, now <clears throat> there's also then um, something noteworthy, which is very important when it comes to execution. Some of you probably might say, um, okay, yes, trading this also from a, from a, um, a tax perspective, but also from a, from a cost perspective, it might look at first glance might look probably um, interesting to trade them, but are they really actively traded? So is there market width? Is there market depth? Um, can you really get a price um, with a with a tight spread all the time? And um, the short, quick answer, I mean, at the, at the end, it depends on which ETF you're trading. But most of the time, the most actively uh, traded um, uh, ETFs, in fact, have seen capital, heavy capital inflows um, uh, since well, years now, and they can be, um, uh, in fact, a very good way to realize investment goals and structures in a very, very easy way and still in a very cost efficient way. Uh, and just to give you a number here on US stock exchanges, for example, on US stock exchanges alone, there are nearly 1000 ETFs with over 1 trillion US dollar um, being invested currently. So this is a number which is uh, probably currently a little under pressure when looking at um, at the at the markets at high volatility. Uh, you usually see not only capital inflows, but you probably also see lots of capital outflows. Um, not necessarily in in um, um, a broad diver well no 
<laughs> well, <laughs> just just know. Um, when looking at the spider, for example, so SPY, um, when you look at the QQQ, for example, uh, this is um, the um, um, ETF, which um, um, can we say duplicates or which represents uh, the NASDAQ 100, for example, you will see naturally that they are very strongly positively correlated to the um, overall index um, we are looking at. So when looking at the SP 500, for example, and you see a massive drop as we have seen last week, for example, well, naturally you will expect the spider ETF, the, the SPY, also to see a, a sharp drop since it um, 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 duplicates, in fact, the SP 500. Um, and therefore, I did the following. Now we just, um, we have a look here at several of these um, uh, um, ETFs, just to give you a better idea. So um, probably we start here with this. So this is an article, it's from uh, Investopedia. I just opened it um, to give you a better idea of um, what is QQQ. Probably it's not that good, but wait one second. Well, let's let's start probably here. Let's start on the website from Atmar Markets, um, uh, atmarmarkets.com. And there you have the chance then to have a look here at the products. And there you can click on ETF, and there you get this ETF CFDs, but also ETFs in this case. So um, we can change that. Hopefully that wasn't a big mistake. No, it was okay. So, um, but these are the top ETFs, which are currently most actively traded, uh, but we stay here on the ETF CFDs, in fact. Um, so there's also the way then to, to trade um, here ETFs in a leveraged way. Uh, wh why is it necessary to, to have, um, 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 uh, what's the word for this, um, to, um, to, to, to offer ETF CFDs uh, and also ETFs and where's the difference? So in fact, when it comes to pricing, there's no big difference or there's no difference at all in fact, but it is a, um, 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 there's a difference when it comes to uh, the offering Admiral Invest. So um, where you can um, have a, um, a plan which you start invest, let's say a monthly payment of let's say 100 euros you invest within an ETF, you do this here into the classic ETF exchange traded fund in this case. So you're not buying an EDF CFD, which you usually actively trade. <clears throat> um, and uh, so there you have now a list, the top ETF CFDs, like the XLF, for example. Um, I have it here. So this is market watch now. This is where you have now a list of the holdings within this ETF. Um, and uh, it represents the financial select sector um, SPDR, in this case, EDF. So what we're looking at here is uh, we look at the big banks, in fact, and currently, especially looking at the current fundamental environment and looking at um, um, global central banks now going um, full all in, let's say, especially with the Fed and their emergency rate cut last week on uh, or la last Tuesday. So today it's the 6th of, of March. Um, last um, um, Tuesday, there was the, let me just third. Yes, it was the third. The third of, of Tuesday, um, they went for an emergency cut of 50 basis points. And then there will also be another um, 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 potential 50 basis point rate cut at the next meeting, which is um, only 12 days ahead of us. So it will be 18th of March. And there's also already, when looking at the Fed Watch tool, for example, there's a 100% um, um, percent chance likelihood um, seen from market participants that the Fed will cut again by 50 basis points at this meeting too. Um, why is this noteworthy when looking at an ETF? In this case, respectively looking at an ETF like the XLF here, uh, which is covering the financial sector, because if yields are going to zero, respectively, uh, potentially go negative within the next uh, recession, which will likely hit also the US here. Um, it is highly likely that especially financial in the, the financial industry and the classic, let's call it banking sector, will massively suffer, um, which is then probably a good reason to be um, skeptical, even though you, you might say, hey, well, we have a, um, a well diversified portfolio here with the XLF, by the way, being invested something like um, with over nearly 13% here um, of total NAS assets being invested within Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's um, premium fund, let's call it. Um, 
and financial financial um, 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 product here. But all in all, you probably do not see uh, the financial sector to outperform, which then means nothing more. Even if you have a broad diversified portfolio here within this ETF, you probably stay away from it and probably wait for a better opportunity um, in the in the uh, in the near future. Um, when looking at ETF CFD, so this is also something which is a interest then um, there's not just a chance to go long like in the classic investment world and, and and buy the ETF but there's also the chance to sell them short so if you become skeptical of the whole financial ser um, um, service sector in this case there's a chance to sell a basket of um, financial shares then or financial service providers and their shares um, with saying I'm shorting the XLF in this case so shorting this XLF um, ETF in this case um, so, but this just just to to, to give you an idea where where I get these these um, 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 uh, uh, how can we call this uh, those well, well I call I call it it's uh, um, um, the rig in case of, of Reuters how do we say that uh, the name of the ETF let's call it so it's not not what I was looking for now but but this gets the job done so um, then this is the financial sector okay um, let, let's have a look here at um, um, QQQ in this case so this is here the article I um, already showed at the beginning here um, you can find this you can just google that and, and then find it via Investopedia there you get an idea of what is the QQQ ETF in this case so it's the Invesco QQQ previously known as PowerShares QQQ and this is a widely held and traded exchange traded fund that tracks the Nasdaq 100 index in this case so uh, when looking at PowerShares that means this is mainly um, techno the technology technology sector um, you're looking at here and it's in fact one of the most um, um, traded, actively, most actively and heavily, most heavily traded um, ETFs around the globe, in fact. And uh, what you can see here then is um, the, ten, the top 10 holdings, for example, as of December 31st. So currently this is nearly one quarter ago. Um, there was Apple, Microsoft, one of the uh, two most valuable companies, also Amazon here. So all these three, plus Facebook, plus um, Google, Alphabet, Class A, and Class, class C shares. Um, we have something here which we naturally refer to FANG. Um, you we probably will say, okay, but when looking at FANG, um, we are looking at Facebook, okay, this is in it. We look at Apple, okay, Amazon, okay. Um, where's the end then? Uh, in fact, this is Netflix. So, um, Probably it's better to say fam, um, and and then um, also have a look here at, at Microsoft, but also Google in case of the G, even though it's an A, but it was would be the third and uh, um, A, and in this case it's better to probably refer to it as Google, um, which already shows that uh, especially if these companies perform well as they did in the um, um, near past, uh, then usually you expect this ETF to perform well too, and also the NASDAQ 100 to perform well. Um, this already gives a good idea of um, how um, such a holding structure could look like, in fact. Um, and uh, there's then, also let's go back here to the Atmo website first, there's also the SPY. Um, it's the spider I was talking about. Um, this um, index is tracking the SP500, in fact, and here um, this is the GDX. I was also referring to that. It's an Van Eck Vectors Gold Miners ETF, which is highly dependent on developments in the gold price and the gold mining sector in this case. And there you can also see it here. It's in fact, um, Barrick Gold is not um, the largest holding within this um, um, ETF, but it's a new Mont Corporation in this case with a uh, um, higher than 12 percent um, of total net assets being held within this ETF but Barrick Gold and New um, um, Newmont are obviously um, here um, responsible for nearly one four, uh, or a quarter of all um, net assets values being held here within this ETF and, and tracking in this case then the commodity slash precious metal um, 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 industry respectively especially tracking gold in this case um, since we're talking about gold miners okay so <clears throat> this is just to give you an idea of how this looks like and um, now based on that there is some um, already becoming quite clear 
um, where the advantages and also the disadvantages occur. Um, so just imagine you, you want to say, I want a, a broad diversified portfolio. This is something we will look at in a few seconds again in more detail than the, in the slide, but um, give you already an idea of how this works. So just imagine and I say, I wanted to have um, a well diversified portfolio, which is uh, currently positioned within gold mining, the gold mining sector, due to the fact that um, given the current recent developments in the financial markets, the instability, the uh, massive monetary stimulus, which is now provided by central banks again, um, to some extent, some might probably say, um, don't mark my words, but probably remember that I'll keep them, uh, keep them, um, 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 you rem remind yourself that I said something similar to that right now. Uh, central banks seem to lose some, at least some of their control right now, which is not a very positive sign. And then usually what you do is you start to mistrust banks. Okay, so that was what we already said here, XLF. And you start to buy, let's call them real values, like gold, for example, which is naturally positive for all companies which are to some extent related to work with gold, um, um, are being in the, in the mining sector and all this. So probably you say, well, yeah, you know what? I want to build a well-diversified um, portfolio of shares which are active within the sector here. Um, and now there's a chance you could say, well, now have a look. And I know about Barrick, I know about Newmont, and you probably also say, yes, Pan American Silver to give it um, some, some, some silver touch, let's call it probably. And uh, you want to trade these three shares. You have now, let's say, 10,000 euro to invest. Um, and, and you want to invest that money within these three shares. So what you could do is easily split them, split it um, and say, I take 3,333, um, put them in Newmont. I put 3,333 in Barrick Gold and I do the same here in Pan American. So the only problem you have here is now uh, that based on, for example, their overall outlook from a fundamental perspective, um, from, from fundamental uh, values, numbers, um, from the technical side, but mainly you, um, I'm given the, the fundamental picture they draw, um, you now have two assets in Berg and Newmont, which have performed so far quite well into the start of the year. Year to date, you can see here performance is 90% in Newmont and 13.8% in, in Barrick Gold since or I'm, I'm, I'm um, standing today here, fifth, respectively 6th of March. But for example, Pan American Silver hasn't performed that well. It's still okay. It's only minus 5.7%, but still given your current um, portfolio mix, this would give your, your overall um, um, expected value a negative touch in this case. So you're not performing as well as you could have once you just invested here most of your of your um, equity within uh, with Barrick and Newmont, and then um, put only a slight portion of it um, into Pan American Silver. I mean, this is just an example. Don't get me wrong; it's not that I that I recommend buying uh, um, uh, here Barrick and, and Newmont and then selling um, Pan American or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. Just to give you an idea of how this works. So this is the first thing. Um, secondly, uh, it's it's a problem because now you have to buy three times, um, uh, you have to pay commissions three times. So, <clears throat> I mean, let's, let's assume it's a $5 per trade you have to pay. Uh, so you're buying five to, uh, you month, your, your, your um, um, a number of shares, you buy $5 in commissions, then you pay another $5 in commissions when it comes to your shares in Barrick, and then you pay another five in Pan American. So this is now the thing, um, you pay $15, uh, um, dollars, and this is the second thing, it's, um, it's not very cost efficient here in this case, because you could easily also buy, bought the ETF uh, paid those five dollars and saved ten bucks. I mean, at the end of the day, we are talking about um, an investment of ten thousand USD. But you you get the point. Um, you pay commissions only once in this case, and you have uh, in addition to that, well diversified or more diversified portfolio, which is um, let's say. <coughs> um, um, well prepared for market turbulences. Let's call them. Um, so these are already, um, it becomes clear where the advantages of trading ETFs comes into play. Um, when talking about advantages, we first of all have nevertheless to find out what are or how do you trade um, um, 
how do you trade ETFs? So in fact, that's not a big deal. In fact, you trade them like every other asset you might have traded so far. When talking about stocks, for example, when it comes to ETF CFDs, it also means that you can um, short sell them. Um, and it depends uh, nevertheless um, on the opening hours of the stock exchange because we are talking about exchange traded funds. That means you need to be aware of the um, opening hours of the exchange in case of trading um, uh, the real ETF in this case, uh, respectively um, the exchange, stock exchange where the ETF is listed. Um, and uh, what you can also see here is now um, how the pricing comes into play. So you, we have seen this already here. Let's come back to our um, number. It's uh, 29.67. This is one share, one ETF you can buy right now. But where does the comp price come from, in fact? And um, this obviously results out of the fact respectively the price of the ETF is usually kept in line with the underlying securities on an ongoing basis based on the ability of an ETF to issue and redeem shares within itself. So here's the side note now. If there are discrepancies and these occur, the, this is usually very efficient. Still, from time to time, there might be um, um, a discrepancy here. Um, then high frequency traders might come into play. You probably remember last week we, was it last week? Or was it two weeks ago? I'm not sure. Um, but here we made um, high frequency trading a topic. And um, there was also this topic in regards to statistical arbitrage, for example. And now you probably see um, that there, there's an analysis going on of the high frequency um, algorithm looking at is the ETF currently based on recent developments of the share and the net asset value which the ETF has to hold to keep the balance uh, or the portfolio mix in line, oh, I'm sorry, in line with uh, what the ETF um, 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 represents. Um, is this the case or isn't it the case? Isn't it the case? Then you have to see, okay, um, looking at the current share price, does the ETF now needs to buy or sell the, uh, the share? And then you try as a HFT, as a high frequency trader, you try to, to profit from that by buying uh, the share in advance of the um, um, ETF in case and try to, um, uh, to profit from this, from this um, 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 discrepancy in this case by buying the undervalued asset and selling the overvalued and wait for the fair price to, um, um, to, be, to be shown again in the market, in fact. The only problem with that is that based on that, there's also then techniques as we made a topic um, um, within this HFT webinar uh, here within this trading spotlight series, there could be times once um, um, HFTs start to play around. Ping, for example, um, the market, see whether there's a big buyer or a big seller, and that way create um, inefficiencies uh, within the marketplace respectively result in moves which are not fundamentally uh, driven and thus um, adding to the overall um, um, instability of the whole construct in this case of the um, of the financial market then when it comes to liquidity providing so if for example an ETF has to buy a certain amount of, of, of let's say new um, 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 a very gold shares, for example, let's say. Um, <clears throat> so then uh, they, they have to buy them, but if there is no real way to trade them at an um, um, adequate price due to HFTs, let's call it play, playing the games, um, then you probably see some discrepancies and sharper moves in one or the other direction, resulting not only in the share itself, but also in the ETF, uh, which could then, negatively affect potential investors um, um, within the ETF. And uh, this is something to keep in mind, but this is also something where you can see how ETFs and uh, the underlying shares respectively, uh, yeah, the underlying shares, um, um, how they play with each other. So there are real shares within the ETF and there is a certain portfolio mix which has to make sure that this is um, 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 represented all the time and thus there are algorithms then buying, selling, depending on uh, current market developments um, and, and, and add shares respectively, dumb shares um, to, the, to the ETF. <clears throat> 
So that said, um, you can you can now see also that institutions use an arbitrage system by creating units to bring the ETF price in line with its underlying asset value. Okay, so this is uh, the short version of what I just tried to describe here. So let's have a look now at the advantages here. Um, I was now a little irritated because unfortunately, uh, this is not bullet point wise, but now you can see all the bullet points already, but this is not a big issue in fact. Uh, let's go through these uh, by um, step by step. Um, in regards to tax efficiency, um, it is uh, very interesting. ETFs deliver very, very interesting ways of investing money. And um, also when it comes to um, um, tax efficiency, um, even though everyone Really, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this right now here. It should be clear that for um, an individual um, um, tax uh, advice, you should refer to your tax advisor. So it's just um, to give you an idea that this is um, an, a topic and this could be of use for, um, for some listeners now, um, viewers here of the video. But still, um, it depends on the individual situation. So in regards to tax efficiency here, investors may have better control over the aspect of when they pay capital gain tax, in fact. So which means um, you could um, also, based on your, on your respective country in which you live, you can probably hold um, an ETF for um, or beyond a certain um, 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 uh, point in future here to save taxes respectively, um, to probably avoid paying taxes directly, but use the um, um, uh, next something like 12 months to keep your money invested and let it work for you, to put it in a very, very um, general, in, put it in general terms. Um, I already explained the second point, lower fees compared to mutual funds. Um, when it comes to mutual funds, there's also um, uh, this, this so-called agile sometimes. So uh, it's not uncommon. That where, when I worked in a bank, this is now nearly yeah, it's 15 years. It's not 20 years ago, but nearly 15 years ago. Um, there were people coming and saying, I want to invest some money. I have, let's say, 10,000 euros. Um, and then they bought, for example, um, fund, mutual fund XYZ. Uh, and on, uh, they, they usually had to pay in addition to the commission. Um, also, they had to pay an agio. So it wasn't that they paid, let's say, 100 euros um, for one piece, but they paid 105 euros. So that was 5%. So the fund needed to gain 5% so that we broke even here um, and then started to make money or respectively there was um, yield um, 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 being paid then to the investor, in fact. When it comes to ETFs, in fact, uh, the, um, the fact that it's exchange traded, it's um, highly liquid, and also that most of the um, ETF um, um, trading is managed um, automated, um, in, in, in an automated way, uh, there is no such need for have um, a big um, 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 infrastructure to be paid for in the background, which means that the fees can naturally be lower, in fact, and probably as low as the commissions you usually pay when trading um, um, a stock and an exchange. Um, in addition to that, it depends on, on the ETF you're looking at, but nevertheless, it's uh, most of the time, and the ETFs we looked at here, XLF, um, QQQ, um, Spider, so SPY, but also GDX, for example, they are um, very active, um, actively traded around the globe, in fact, not only in the US, but around the globe. And uh, this um, delivers high liquidity, which leaves investors in the position to trade the respective ETF each time of the day if they want to. So uh, they can deposit money whenever they want. They can withdraw money whenever they want. Um, <coughs> sorry. So it's um, um, high liquidity means that you um, have a very good, very good way to, um, um, uh, to deposit respectively or invest money and withdraw money. Um, trading transactions here, as the ETFs can be traded like stocks, investors can place a variety of different orders. So um, it's not only that you, that you give your, um, in case of a mutual fund, you give your um, bank clerk the advice by fund XYZ, but there's also the chance then, since it's an exchange traded fund, to work with limit orders, stop loss orders, buy on margin orders, and all this, um, which are obviously not available with mutual funds. So this adds further um, uh, flexibility, respectively, 
not only flexibility, but also um, further to the fact that you um, can decide which level you plan to buy, respectively, you plan to sell. So take, a, um, um, for example, uh, take profit order. You can, you can place, for example. Um, and uh, all in all, we can also say that um, ETFs have um, a lower risk um, since an ETF usually invests in a variety of stocks. So it's more diversified, resulting in a broader diversification. There's arguably lower investment risk. So this is something in the um, world around asset management or um, hedge fund industry or managed accounts, we refer to as better risk in this case. So this is usually, it's arguably a, a lower investment risk, in fact, uh, and thus um, uh, mean it, it's uh, probably suitable for a broader range of, um, of, of investors, which adds all in all then to the high liquidity, lower transaction costs and all this. So this um, goes hand in hand if you want. Uh, still, there's also disadvantage. So it's not um, um, that everything is, is great and, and this is the greatest uh, in, investment tool or, or um, vehicle you can find. There's also some uh, disadvantages I want to present to you. So. First of all, um, let's talk about settlement delays. So ETF sales here, in fact, may not settle for two days after a transaction. Um, it's not that it's common. Um, so this is also not very common when it comes to very liquid ETFs. Uh, based on my personal experience. I, I don't know, um, I'm probably there's, there are other occasions, but all in all, um, I, I haven't heard about this um, very often, in fact. So in fact, never so far, but it's still something um, you, you should keep in mind. So this is definitely something, um, once talking to a, an advisor, um, a financial um, um, service provider, once doing some kind of investments or something, be aware that this could be an issue, in fact. Um, and that means that the seller's funds may not technically be available for reinvestment until the two days have passed, in fact. Um, so this could be a disadvantage, respectively a problem. Still, it's um, most of the cases, it's not an issue, especially when trading high liquid um, ETFs. There's also still illiquid ETFs. Some thinly traded ETFs may have wide bid-ask spreads, that might have been the case. For example, there was one uh, client of mine, he came to me at the end of last year, um, he wanted to buy volatility and was referring to an ETF he planned to do that with. Um, but the price or, or the, the, the bid ask spread was, was extremely wide. And that had to do with the fact that it was a thinly traded ETF. He had a good, I mean, that was a quite good um, analysis he did so far. Just imagine buying volatility at the end of last year that probably paid out um, quite handsomely so far when looking at current um, volatility levels. Still, uh, this is something to keep in mind when, when trading ETFs and when it comes to trading costs. So uh, once um, liquidity uh, um, um, thins out, then usually it could result in wider bid-ask spreads, meaning that your transaction cost could be higher than usual. Um, and then also there's arbitrage discrepancies. So while ETF prices track their underlying asset class reasonably well, there can be trans discrepancies here, even though they usually tend to disappear fairly quickly. But if they occur, then it could result in what I just described in regards to HFTs, high frequency trading algorithms trying to profit from them. And um, then there's also the trading costs. While ETFs are in general very cost efficient, an investment value which is small or less frequent could mean that there are lower cost alternatives by investing, for example, directly in the asset class uh, you're, you're looking for. Um, and yeah, in fact, that's it on the, on the disadvantages on, on ETFs. And uh, probably that's now before we start with our summary. Let's have a look here again at, um, at the website from Upner Markets again. Also uh, here, once you're, probably you might say, well, I was looking for something like that. Probably not necessarily right now with all the volatility and um, thinking about investing in, 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 in equity markets, probably things get worse before they get better. But in the future, once uh, things start to calm down a little, volatility comes back, market starts to, um, um, to stabilize and, and um, also uh, recession fears probably disappear or at least market stabilize to some extent, you probably say this is now the time after a bigger pullback in equities um, having happened now um, that, that I try to diversify my portfolio with ETFs. How can you achieve that? Let's take Admiral Markets as an example here and uh, have a look then at uh, the 
start trading button in this case on the website that you can click on account types and once you click on this uh you are here mt4 mt5 let's let's stay here with the mt5 you can see there's this invest mt5 account so this is um the account you could lose here uh, you could use in this case to formulate something like a um, savings plan for example and then you can also see that uh, the number of trading instruments is limited to um here stocks physical stocks in this case um and etfs so real um um um, um uh, real exchange traded funds. So we're not talking about ETF CFDs in this case. And it depends on whether you're a retail client or a professional client. So retail clients will most of the time trade the most active ones, um, the most um, liquid ones, GDX, EM, um, 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 XLF, QQQ, Spider, and all this. While uh, professionals probably have also access to something like what I referred to as the example I, I showed, I, I presented to you, where I was um, um, referring to volatility, for example. So probably you plan to to um, buy um, volatility, something like that. Um, um, uh, VXX, for example, volatility on the volatility and all of this stuff. And you can you can probably say, okay, I want to trade this via an ETF. Um, this is probably not necessarily available for retail clients. I'm not sure about this, by the way. So it could be that you have the chance also to trade this as a retail client. Just, um, 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 yeah, my, my, my head spins a little here in this regard. But there's most of, of these um, um, uh, ETFs which are available for professional uh, professional clients only most of the time should have this let's call it liquidity issue then that's most uh, most of these etfs are probably thinly traded so you can um, find here the way to open such an account an invest account in fact um, via account types on the website for further information and if you if you plan to um, uh, start buying um, etfs then in the in the future so <coughs> Let's um, uh, sum all this up. ETF is short for Exchange Traded Fund. It's a group of securities you can buy or sell via, um, uh, via stock exchange. Um, ETFs in general, even though this is probably not the best time to say it right now, because uh, now the capital outflows probably um, are more massive than they used to be in the near past. But um, over the last years, last decade, let's say, ETFs have um, um, seen, definitely have seen heavy capital inflow since they can be a very good way to realize investment goal structures, um, which perfectly suit um, the risk profile of a respective investor. And um, so, in fact, ETFs come with a lot of interesting advantages for private investors. Lower fees compared to mutual funds is probably one of the most interesting things. Um, um, it's also that they have... Uh, naturally lower risk due to broader diversification and different asset classes or lowering the so-called beta risks. And then also very interesting, most um, of, of investors would potentially look at this. So it's a um, um, quite tax efficient way um, to uh, diversify your portfolio. And um, yeah, that's it on, on ETFs, in fact. So let's now have a look at um, what happens on Monday, same time with Paul. He will uh, tell you how to profitably trade oil. Um, very interesting, in fact, because right now oil is probably of high interest due to uh, the developments around OPEC. You probably have seen the traders talk together with uh, Gitan last week this week, last week, I'm not sure, um, when we talked about um, uh, developments also around the OPEC, which is currently taking place in Vienna. Um, I can also tell you that uh, within this month, there will be a webinar, not next week, but in two or in three weeks. I'm not really sure. But um, I will also tell you, uh, sh show you a strategy on um, just one second. Is it true? Pair trading? I'm not sure. Uh, probably probably uh, it is a strategy on gold. So, uh, however, so I definitely can assure you that everything around gold, um, uh, respect of the oil trading here, when it comes to Paul, you should definitely listen to it. It's uh, worth it. So um, he will talk to you um, or teach you the different types of oil instruments, what a trader needs to be aware of before trading oil and how to best position yourself to succeed, uh, succeed at oil trading, tactics for trading oil successfully, and all this takes place here on Monday at 2 p.m. London time uh, on the 9th of March, 2020. Um, and uh, check your inbox for the registration link. If you watch the video now on YouTube, 
um, please feel free to reach out to AdmiralMarkets.com and register under the Education and Webinars tab for the Trading Spotlight webinar series. Once you register for one event, you are also automatically registered for all the upcoming events. Um, this is already the website I referred to several times now, AdmiralMarkets.com. Here are the contact details. And as a fully regulated broker at the end of this webinar, I have to show you here the risk disclaimer. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. I wish you all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week on Friday. I look forward to it. Talk to you soon. See you. And bye-bye.